Mountain Mouth Fishing Fam. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. Uh, it's not something I intend to make a whole lot of, but I actually asked and was told, yeah, definitely do it, share your opinion. So, I'm not here to bash or badmouth or, or, or uh, put down any company, corporation, anybody, uh, for whatever their choices might be, but I just wanted to share my opinions on something with uh, what I came up with and what I've, I've developed over some, you know, some toiling and some investigation and, of course, a lot of information gathering. I didn't want to come right out until I gathered enough data points to come up with a concise conclusion. So, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail, um, this is a little quick video about, well, maybe not so quick, because I'm going to go in a little depth. Um, but it's going to be about the new Monster Bass um, box company, the new mail order tackle box company. There's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of box companies. Um, you know, you've got Monster Bash, you've got uh, Mystery Tackle Box, you've got Lucky Tackle Box, you've got, uh, you know, a, a modern, those are the big three that we know of, but you, you have smaller ones. Um, obviously, Fishing Care Package had their box. I don't ever promote them. They have the worst reputation, um, bar none, from all the box corporations that I've ever researched or been a part of, um, you know, purchasing as a customer. <clears throat> and everything in life is a consumer beware thing. So what I like to do is hold certain, hold companies to the letter of their word, to whatever their mission statement is, to whatever they promote, and to cut through the bullshit of what, um, you know, marketing can do to sway a customer like myself to purchase either a certain level package or a package deal and then turn around and not see fit that my money's well spent. So, in particular, the beauty of the Monster Bass Corporation's motto, the new, the new uh, Monster Bass um, box system, is it is not like your Lucky Tackle Box, which has fallen off, off the rails big time. Um, their promotion is that all of their products, I'll get to this, um, all their products are to be major manufacturer name brand top of the line products or, or high quality. I won't say top of the line because you're not going to get your, you know, um, a Roman mother uh, swim bait in one of their packages uh, unless they're going to charge a thousand dollars a box and you're not going to get a Roman made mother. Uh, so, you know what I mean? But it's going to be good quality products, name brands that we are all very aware of, established corporations that have been in the market and have expertise in whatever their field is, jig heads or hooks or, or uh, you know, baits, soft plastics or hard plastics, crankbaits, whatever, which is excellent. This has been a long time coming. A lot of the corporations, Mystery Tackle Box, Lucky Tackle Box, they, Bait Crate, they've all switched over to a profit motive. Um, that has caused the quality of the merchandise they put in to slip. A lot of those corporations, Mystery Tackle Box, which I get the elite version of, um, they'll throw in the Carl's Stash or the Catch Co. or the MTB whatever brand that is a house brand uh, crankbait or whatever. And they're, they're filling. They're using those as fillers to their box. Um, so you're not getting a value. That's That's taking away a space from a product that you might want to get from, uh, you know, owner, or you might want to get from Strike King, uh, or K, you know, KVD. So it's a filler in that box. It gives you bulk, but it lowers my, my personal opinion. It lowers the expected value for the revenue that you're putting into their pocket for the expense. So, um, I'm, like I said, I'm not attached to Mystery Tackle Box. It just happens to be the box that I subscribe to. I got myself a special deal. Uh, for July with another company. Uh, I'm just ordering uh, probably just the one box just to test it out. It is not a bait carrying company. It is a brand new company that its first box will be shipped out in July, which is my birthday month, so I gave myself a little early birthday uh, present to myself. Um, they are a tackle equipment uh, supplier, not really a bait supplier. So I'm not expecting to see crankbaits or anything from them, but I'm hoping to see, you know, uh, line cutters and things like that that might assist. Um, and I'll be doing that unboxing next month. <clears throat> that said, uh, the other prominent statement from uh, from Monster Bass, uh, besides the quality products every month, no no name brands, all major name established corporations, the value system that they espouse. You know, you pay uh, say thirty five dollars for their for their box, and you should expect to see you know seventy dollars in value. 
I think was the rough estimate that they, they put out. Um, number two, and, and something, again, uh, that I hold very dear, is a regional-specific box. So what they've done is they've partnered with uh, YouTubers, primarily, um, anglers who are, you know, pro, pro-am anglers. Uh, my region in the Northeast, because I'm in New Jersey, is a YouTuber and a former... Uh, 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 FLW, uh, you know, angler, uh, which uh, if you check out, he's he goes under the uh, name Smallmouth Crush, but he's the northeastern um, representative for monster bass, and that's Travis Manson. I know him well because I followed him for many, many, many years. Um, they also have Alex Rudd, and uh, I believe he's the South. Uh, they have a gentleman who I'm not very accustomed to or, or know, which is Benjamin Nowak. Uh, he's for the Midwest Great Lakes region. Uh, he gives them, he, these, these gentlemen are there to show a little expertise and to lend their advice as to their region and the lakes that they fish, their waterways, so that when you get your box, if you're in Tennessee, you get it from a knowledgeable person in the Tennessee region who can say, yeah, your fish are going to, you know, use crawdads and worms as their primary forage in those lakes, tributaries, waterways, creeks, whatever. California, you're looking at shad, and, and, you know, Florida, you're looking at, at cre you know, different different things. Like up here in the Northeast, we're going to look at minnows and shad and, and crayfish and worms as a primary forage for our bass. Um, and, and by knowing, by using people in those regions to, de to develop uh, a box individual to that specific region and that time period, because spawn cycles, uh, weather patterns are regional. You know, California had huge droughts. Waters dropped. Uh, fishing was hard. You know, it, it's, it's warmer climate earlier in the season. Florida doesn't get cold, traditionally. I mean, they're, they're, they get cold, but 56 degrees to, to them, which is cold, is a beautiful day here in Jersey. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, you, you use that, and that's a great, again, a marketing ploy. And, and I, I appreciate it. And to be 100% honest, that is something that I very, very, very in-depth uh, for hours of a conversation over the phone uh, with a mystery tackle box um, customer representative discussed. Uh, but I, I had the understanding of the logistics of trying to develop that kind of a program. Now, Monster Bass also uses a computer system that uh, they're going to develop with feedback from each one of their consumers, uh, their customer base, that they can use to develop these boxes and narrow it down and, and create a more precise box system. And I'm very, very much hoping that this works out for them and that this is where it goes. So far, I am 100% not buying it and not pleased at all. Uh, and I'll get to that. Um, because this is money that, that's harder on people earn money and they want their money to live up to the expectations of what they buy into. Uh, so for that, we'll put that aside. But these gentlemen, they lend their credence, they lend their expertise. Some of them are just, you know, relatively good social media platforms, and he, they've par partnered with them so that they'll get that um, pro staff promotional, not professional, pro staff in the realm of social media means promotional staffing. You'll get a kickback, and or you'll get uh, free free equipment or reduced codes to so that you can supply your own equipment if you promote that, those goods and make the corporation look better. So I don't buy in when I see Pro Step. I don't give a crap what he's talking about. I want to have it in my hands. I want to feel the quality of the plastic, the, the rigidity of the hooks, the, the quality of the line ties, the, the, the weights of whatever uh, carriers they have on their treble so that it's not going to pull out on the first, you know, four pound, five pound bass. Um, or if I'm throwing my big swim baits for muskie or pike, I want to know that it's going to last. The paint's not going to crack. It's not going to blow up and turn into sawdust you know, on the first, on the first good size fish I get. So having a person promoted on social media platform doesn't hold that much weight with me until I actually have the product. Or I do a lot of research and I get that same consensus backed up uh, time after time after time. So the crux of this, uh, being it's a brand new corporation, I would have done the same thing if Lucky Tackle Box had just come out or, and I will do the same thing with this new box that I'm going to start in July. I'll release another small video about them. But because this is the new one on the market and I've just started this channel there, unfortunately, first in my crosshairs. 
So, um, to get to it, I researched, called up friends in multiple states, anglers that have been fishing for, for years, um, from Tennessee, Arizona, California, uh, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, <clears throat> North, upstate New York, myself in New Jersey, although I did not buy a box, so I, I had to rely on information gathered from them, Facebook uh, conversations and, and text messages uh, back and forth, but also witnessing uh, about 27 YouTubers, uh, of which, uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, 20 of them I have listed here. Uh, I'm not going to drop names of any of the YouTubers, but I have a consensus of Florida, Northern Kentucky, Arkansas, Oklahoma, um, Michigan, Illinois, New Jersey, upstate New York, um, a, a bevy of, of different locations. So you have a southern representation, a Midwest Great Lakes region uh, representation, northeast and uh, southwest as well. Um, as well, you know, I didn't get anybody from the, from the northwest. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know anybody that ordered these that's up in that region. If you, if you do, if you see this, if you promote this, put this video out there, and somebody lives in the northwestern section of the Monster Bass promotion, um, I'd love to get a comment in the, in the comments below what you felt about your, your box, what was in the box. Uh, specifically, the very first inaugural box, which I give a huge pass to Monster Bass. I'll get to why. And then this month, being June, their, sec their first true box, non, uh, non uh, you know, inaugural, but their first month's subscription, and then, of course, July, which will be their second uh, month's box to, to go out. Um, I, I put aside the inaugural because there's a lot of things that can go wrong, uh, there's a lot of supply chain issues that can occur, and more importantly, when you come out of the gate as a new corporation, you want to put your best foot forward. Um, so, with that said, specifically to the inaugural box, what struck me very poorly and them not living up to their uh, to their expectations. Promotion was regional boxes. When I think of a regional box, I think of a person fishing in Florida during May is going to have a certain water temperature, a certain forage for their bass. They're going to be coming out of spawn because they'll spawn relatively early. In, in fact, in Florida and the great southern states, they can pretty much spawn any time of the year. You know, but there is some sort of a natural selection where the fish will get into a rhythm. But there, a lot of those would be coming out of post spawn in May. Uh, they probably were spawning earlier in April, okay, or yeah. So that kind of a fishing, you might want to go to a little more finesse. Uh, you know, a little slightly deeper water. Not to say that there's not fish spawning up in shallow water too. A Florida fisherman tends to go for, for really standby baits being flukes, swim baits, chatter baits for reaction, flukes for finesse, uh, worms, of course, you know, senkos. Um, the, the idea of a lot of the baits that came into that box, and what got me bad was, or got me started, was every single box that I witnessed... And outside of the ones on the YouTubes that I witnessed, the people that I talked to, every single box in May contained the exact same product. I won't say exact same baits 100%, but it's the same product in that those boxes were not regional specific, they were bait specific. They were um, contract specific boxes. And what I mean by that is, every single box had a live target bait ball. Threadfin shad, multiple colors. So every single box that I witnessed, and the ones that I got contact calls and, and, and text messages, every single box had a bait ball. That's not regional specific. Florida can't use a 10-foot diving bait. Most of their waterways down in, you know, northern Florida, the Panhandle. Those are shallow marsh regions, brack water that broke, you know, cl it, it's clear water, fresh water, but it's five, six foot depth at max, if, you know. And you're, you've, if you do find an area that's 10 or 12 foot, you've got hydrilla, you've got grass that grows up, 
And, you know, if you're trying to run a, a double treble fish bait through that grass, you're going to be bringing up just mats and mats of weeds every time you reel in. So a bait down there should not be a 20-foot, 12-foot, 10-foot diving bait. It should be a suspending shallow bait, a jerk bait, or a swim bait that runs 2 to 4 max. Um, if you're going to go for anything like that, you might as well drop shot. Or, you know, or just throw a craw on, on a Texas rig or an, or, or an Alabama. You know, you, there's, there's a million things you could do for deep water that is a lot more conducive to a hookup without having to deal with constantly bringing up a friggin' doormat of weeds every time you reel in. Not regionally specific. It was marketing by whatever corporations that this company had a contract with. Everyone had a live target. Everyone had a Strike King Rage Crawl. Either it was the Beaver style, or the crawl, Crawdad style, but they all had the Strike King. Not regional specific. If it was regional specific, yes, those areas of the country that forage on Crawdads would have had that in their packages. But there would have been boxes sent out with flukes or, uh, you know, uh, uh, tubes. Fish like tubes. I mean, more towards smallmouth, yes, I've, I've always tube fish for smallmouth, but I've caught big, you know, largemouth bass on a tube. Um, and it's not like Strike King doesn't have this variety of bait profiles. So even though it might have been, yeah, you're locked in a contract with Strike King, KBD, you could have thrown out Ochos to Florida. You could have thrown out Craws to uh, the Midwest. And you could have thrown out Worms to the California people in the... In the uh, south, uh, the the southwest, well, I guess they called it. Um, they didn't do that. They all had the Strike Pro. They all had the Craws or Beaver style, but just very similar. They all had um, the Daiichi hooks, which I think were mislabeled. Uh, they kept saying that they were a <laughs> a drop shot hook or for a finesse hook. It was a long shank worm hook. Um, now that's that's not here or there. That's not that's not uh, Monster Bass's problem. That was Daiichi's labeling. So be it. Uh, I would never use a hook with a shank that long for fishing a drop shot. I use a circle hook, uh, like you know, like octopus hooks, things like that. Um, that's just me. I'm sure you could use a long shank, even a long shank offset for uh, for drop shot. But I've I've never done that. I've always Texas rigged. Or, uh, or use those, you know, live bait, I've used long shank, long sh straight shank hooks, but, uh, you know, through the lip. But that's live bait. That's not really drop shotting, uh, certainly not drop shotting live bait or, or, or a um, soft plastic. But, again, that's my technique over what you might do. You might very well use a long, long uh, shanked uh, hook for, for drop shotting. i just never done it. That's me personally. Um... The one aside that I give them 100% appeasement to, I don't, I don't mind, every single box had the Z-Man product line's new shorter ticklers. They've had their larger, longer, uh, I think three or four inch, but they've dropped it down to this little, this little Z-Man uh, TRD tickler, and with it, they, you got a Z-Man shroom heads. Now, that was a special thing that I agree every single box should have had. As an all, inaugural box... Uh, he, the, the gentleman who was the former CEO of, and former, I think, co-founder of Lucky Tackle Box, had a deal to come out with a brand new, newly released uh, bait from Z-Man. So he got basically first billing on it, and he put it out in every box. And that's, that's great. If you get a contract where you're first in line to get a new bait before it hits stores or before it's well-known, and you can get it into your thing, that's, that's awesome. Totally awesome. And I, I hope that happens more with this company, that Monster Bass gets more early access baits. 13 Fishing has new baits coming out. Let me correct myself. 1 3 Fishing. I, help, I hate when people call it 13. It's 1 0, it's O N E T H R E E Fishing. So it's 1 3 Fishing, but people call it 13 because it's the number 13. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Sorry. <laughs> but at any rate, um, they have new swim baits coming out. So, keep your eyes open. Hopefully, Monster Bass can get in touch and start releasing before they become well-known out in, you know, the dicks and the academies and, and all. 
that maybe they'll start, they'll throw into their boxes in, say, August, um, you know, 1-3 fishing soft plastic uh, paddle tail swim baits, or what have you. Um, every single package, every single package had a smart bait. Smart bait is the color changing lures. It's a thermal plastic similar to the old body glove t shirts. I don't know, I'm old, but we used to have when I was growing up, you had body glove uh, t shirts, which were uh, cotton tees that had a thermal reactive coating on the, on, the, on the fabrics. And if you had a guy came up and put his hand on your, on, your, on your arm or you're out in the sun, the fabric would actually leave the outline of his hand in a different color. It would change compared to the rest of the fabric. So if the fabric was cool and you had a hot hand on it, it would change color and you'd have this handprint. It was awesome. So smart baits is the same thing. It's a thermal changing plastic. So the dye in it reacts. Uh, sometimes they start out as a June bug. You put it in hotter, whole, you know, warmer waters and it might come up with a chartreuse color. So you can get like a chartreuse tail on a, a June, June bug chartreuse speckle on your bait, which whether or not that attracts more fish or causes more bites, I don't know, but that's cool but it's not regionally specific. Because if every single box has smart baits, it's because it is brand specific. It means smart bait contact, he, got, he contacted smart bait. He contacted uh, KVD or, or Strike Pro, or Strike King, excuse me, Live Target, Daiichi. So he contacted these corporations and they supplied him with 150,000 units of Strike King Craws. 150,000 units of Daiichi, the same hook. So he just threw that hook in every single box. Why didn't some people not get EWG, 2-aught, 4-aught, whatever, hooks, worm hooks, and a package of, uh, you know, Yums, um, or even KVD's Ochos. Okay, stick with Strike King. Keep with the same brand. Get Ochos, don't get that Daiichi hooks, get a pair of Owners. Owner extra wides, you know what I mean? Uh, still, top of the line name brand. That was month one. And witnessing it countlessly over and over and over, and you're more than welcome, go on YouTube, search for, you know, uh, Monster Bass box unboxings, or Monster Bass box, I don't know. But search on, on I literally did the legwork of just constantly looking at fellow YouTubers that I know, and, and I went through and followed them. And then when they got the box, I kept up with it. Social media platforms, when they listed it on their Facebooks or on their on their Instagrams, I followed it. So I waited for their, their reviews, and I looked, and I said, well, that's the same thing in New Jersey and northern New York as he got in Florida, as he got in Kentucky, which I think that gentleman took the same... It's still part of the South. I wouldn't consider it the South, but whatever. Uh, as the same exact product that they got in the in in my friend in Arkansas and my friend in Arizona a uh, guy I've known for years in California ordered it got the same friggin baits got the same buzz bait in California as he got as they got in in Florida but another guy in Florida got a uh, spinner bait but it was the same company so again now there was there was variations there were war eagle buzz baits and spinner baits and then there was booyah spinners that came out so again if 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 i was to be 100 percent honest if there was the war eagle buzz baits given in certain boxes for those regions and then the spinners from booyah given to the other regions totally would have given them credit for that but all in all if you go in and re research this the baits were the same there's no regional definition there at all it's just what companies he started out with now again giving them a pass on that. They were all name brand co corporations. Uh, aside from War Eagle, which I'm not a... I know they're big, I just don't find them to be in the same caliber uh, as, as, say, a more mass-marketed company or a longer-established company. Uh, although, I, I, to be honest, I don't know how long War Eagle has been out. I'm sure they're, they're a very long-lived uh, corporation. But uh, where I'm from... That's not a corporation that I've been accustomed to using over the, the years that I've fished. That said, putting that aside, they're putting their best foot forward. They're getting as many good companies in, building up these boxes and shipping them out. And by trying to keep the logistics as smooth running as possible so there's the least amount of issues, they put out these general boxes. 
um, I got a response from the CEO, the owner, the developer, the head of Monster Bass. So when I approached with a comment about this issue that I saw, that all the boxes looked the same, he came back, and this is his quote. Uh, Here's the approach I took in my attempt to, uh, to regionalize the boxes. So, here's the approach I took in my attempt to regionalize the boxes. So, everyone received what I refer to as a baseline box. Again, if every box is baseline, that's not regional specific. Every box should be empty, and then every angler should influence what goes into that box. He could come up with corporations that he has and profile styles and colors for each one of those things. 17 different crankbaits of different depths and different color pro uh, profiles. So then you go to those regional experts and they would then say, I need uh, two to four foot diving, go for a perch or a crayfish pattern and put that in the boxes going down to the southern region of Florida, Kentucky, Tech, you know, uh, uh, Louisiana. Okay, and then the other guy says, look, I need bluegill patterns, I need uh, 12-foot divers, crankbaits, square bill, put those in the boxes, because I'm the, I'm the regional guy from California, okay? So that's what we're going to do in a lot of, because California, you got hard bottom, uh, you know, a lot of these are old quarries, etc. So that's, you know, it's a different, it's a different um, ecosystem. So those baits need to be specific. He goes on to say, So everyone received what I refer to as a baseline box, meaning that we put together a really well-rounded box of baits that you could use in every region. Every box contained the same brands, but not the same baits. Now he's splitting hairs here. Because when I hear that, what I'm hearing is, everybody was a brand-specific box, and when I say there wasn't the same baits, it was because there was different colors, different color variants, or in the soft plastics, one was a beaver tail, one was a craw, one was a, a worm. You're really stretching what a different bait is. A soft plastic fluke in one entire region where you ship out worms in a different region, not different colored fluke in one region and a totally different color fluke in this region, or black-blue craws here, green pumpkin craws there, which is important, but anywhere you go, you're going to need those color variants depending on, did it rain? We just had four inches of rain. Uh, so our waters are washed out, completely muddy. Um, black, blue, purple, um, those color patterns, black, purple flake, black, blue flake, that's what I'm throwing right now because the water's muddy. That You got, you know, six inches of, of clarity is not there. You've got two to four, if you're lucky. And... I want profiles for the bass to attack. Not, they're not going to care if it's chartreuse. They're not going to see it. So, um, carrying on. So every box contained the same brands, but not the same bait. There were three different live targets. I didn't see any difference in the live target except the color palette. One was a, a blue, bluegill pattern. Uh, one was a chartreuse pattern. But it was all, every single one of them, was a bait ball. Now there might be some variations in the depth of those bait balls. Uh, there were deep diving bait balls and there were a shallower diving bait ball, but they were all live target bait balls. It wasn't a live target crank, a live target jerk bait, a live target bait ball. It, it, that would be brand specific, but they weren't regionally differentiated. They were all bait balls. Again, I'm not buying it. Three different live targets, two different Booyah, two different War Eagle. And again, like I said, that I give them credit. There was Booyahs in some and War Eagles in other. But there were the same split between the same region. So you could have three anglers in the same Midwest region. Two of them got the Booyah, one of them got the War Eagle, or vice versa. Not showing a whole lot of, of quality control there. Uh, five smart baits. Again, this was all, they were all smart baits. It was just body profiles. Craws, uh, or craw, or the worm, or what have you. It's still smart bait across the board. Seven rattle traps. Again, the only difference was the color pattern. And that was the 
purple, white, which is okay. Uh, I think, I forget what the color was, but it was purple, purple with a white side, purple back. You had the old-fashioned standby, the silver uh, with the, the red phony blotches. I've got one from the 70s over here. A, a real original collectible, tiny little uh, original Bill Lewis rattle trap. Totally quality brand, 100%. They catch fish anywhere. But that's the problem. They catch fish anywhere. He could have, in, in hindsight, he could have held that to this month's box. So you could have shipped out certain regions, rattle traps, last month, and then this month cycled in to a different region could have thrown rattle traps in. I just don't, I don't get it. But seven different rattle traps. I only can see color variants in that. Um, and so on. The only bait that received in every region was the Z-Man because I was able to get an exclusive on a brand new bait that just came out. Again, 100% agree with that. That's totally awesome. And I hope that goes forward and you get more, um, you know, more brand deals. That's, that's cool. I don't have a problem with that. There can be in every box across the board, everybody gets uh, a beer koozie. Everybody gets a line cutter. Everybody gets whatever that's coming out from a brand. I don't care about that. That's fine. But when the other mass number of baits are the same across every single box, you're not living up to your mission statement. So in about a week... Everyone will receive a survey. The, date, the data we collect will be used to create our, um, your profile. Once we've established your profile and the types of places you fish, the baits you like and don't like, we'll then be able to really be in a really good position to customize these boxes, so not only by region, but by angler. That's a very high bar to, make, to, to, to set. I hope it works out. That's our goal. Now it's going to take probably three months worth of data, but with each passing month, our software should be able to customize multiple boxes per region to better match the angler. That's sort of taking out the influence of these pro-am YouTubers, what have you. So in a few months, they're going to, my philosophy is they would pull off a lot of the influence from them. They still might have a hand in it uh, on a minute scale, but they're looking to have an algorithm basically start shipping you stuff that you would buy anyway. It's, it's the same thing as when you pick up your phone, and I don't know if it's just me, but I've been talking to a buddy about something. My wife and I were talking about hammocks. We're going to get a new hammock. She wants a hammock. I didn't search hammocks online. I pick up my phone, ding! You might be interested in such and such hammock. The Illuminati's watching me. But, but uh, you know, it's that kind of a thing where they're getting what you want and shipping you what you want, which is fine. But if I want that, I'll go to the store and buy what I want. I don't need to spend $35 a month. I want something that I don't necessarily know, but a more skilled angler is willing to steer me in the right direction. If I could be co-angler on a boat with, with any... Bassmaster champion, multi Bassmaster champion. I'd be freaking ecstatic. If I am co angler with my buddy down the block, we both shoot the same stuff in the water. We both throw the same stuff. We're not learning anything else from each other. We're not. You're not you're not developing more skills. You're only buying what you always buy. It's like going to the <laughs> alright. Truth be told, I'm w i am I was watching um Fast and the Furious and the character um, portrayed by Paul Walker. Great man, did a, a ton of great research on, um, on the traveling patterns, the migration of great white sharks. People, a lot of people don't know about that about him. They know him from the, from the movies, but they don't know that he was big into research and development, f tracking great white sharks, their numbers, their populations, their flow, because he was big into the environment. That said, the Paul, uh, the Paul Walker character in the movie would go into the, the little rest, the little side shop, and he'd order the same sandwich every time, and they were wondering, why do you keep coming back here for a tuna sandwich? It's crappy tuna, but you come, I'll have the tuna every time. Um, if you're just buying tuna every time, you're not living life. Have a ham sandwich once in a while. Have a, you know, ha have a roast beef on rye. I don't even like rye bread, but I'll try it. You gotta, you gotta expand your skill set. 
and you got to learn from people who are willing to share those skills. And that's what I was really deeply hoping that Monster Bass was going to supply to us consumers, which is what I had said to Mystery Tackle Box many, many, many months ago, long before this, this was even anywhere on my radar, which was regional specific pro anglers explaining what color patterns of baits work in any given section. So if you have areas where you have lots of grass, lots of weeds, murky water, tannic water, because you have a, an old historical timber area that has tons of sunken cypress, sunken logs, that water's very root beer colored. You don't throw green pumpkin in that. Fish don't see it. Unless you pop them in the head and snag them foul mouth style, like I always do. Dragging them across the bottom and catching a, <laughs> catching a fish by the, by the side of his head, not actually in his mouth. And that's where I got my name from. Uh, it's not that I curse a lot, although I can cuss like a sailor. Uh, it's that I was known for casting and catching foul hooking a lot of fish. Big fish, bringing them on the boat because I foul hooked them. Not because I got them in the lip. Never said. If it's landed, it counts, right? So, uh... The point being, it wasn't regionally specific. So that was month one. And like I said, I gave them a big pass because they want to put their best foot forward. They want to put out the best box. This being their second month, small data point. I got a few people to give me information back. Um, one, one person on YouTube, I actually have both last month's box and this month's box. In this month's box, um, so last month, Let's find this here, because I do have it. May. Last month, he had the Live Target Bait Ball, Strike King's Rage Tail, and the, uh, in the Craw. He had the War Eagle Spinner uh, Buzz Bait. He had uh, the Bill Lou's Rattle Trap, the Doomsday Tackle Shads. Everybody got those, those little shad fluke drop shot baits with the foil. Cool looking bait. Uh, the little foil crinkles, so it's supposed to emulate the breaking bones, I guess, so it tricks the bass to hold on tighter. Awesome. Totally cool. Um, the Doomsday Shad, the Smart Baits, the Daiichi Hooks, and the Z-Man TRDs with the Shroom Heads to go with. Again, the TRD stuff, the Z-Man stuff was every box because it was a exclusive. June. Live Target again. He got a Live Target Topwater Frog. I will say he got a Topwater Frog whose design is influenced by the person, well, the father, or the son, he's the son. The, his father influenced me into getting into fishing. So that's cool. He got a Bandit 200. Awesome bait. I've got them myself. i got a bunch of them in different colors. Uh, the white with the black speckles on them. I love that color. It works wonders. Um, awesome bait. 10 out of 10 there. Booyah Jighead. Strike Pro Rage Tail. Craws last time. Got a creature bait this time. Yum Worms, V&M um, Paddle Tail, uh, Swim Baits, another pack of Daiichi Hooks, different style, but still. And what really burned me, and this is the only reason that I actually filmed this, because I was honestly not wanting to put this out, because, you know, you can burn yourself on putting forth your opinion. They'll say, oh, you're just a fanboy for Lucky Tackle Box. Fuck Lucky Tackle Box. Oh, you just, you, you buy Mystery Tackle Box, and that's the ones you open up on your show, or on your YouTube channel, so you're just kissing ass to them. Or you're just on their bandwagon because they're well-established. Well, one, they were the second to the fucking plate. The first one was LTB, and LTB screwed themselves over. And there are cheaper box sets out there that give you quality baits as well. There are box sets out there that donate a giant amount of their what would be profits to charities. Getting kids uh, you know, out on the water. Uh, getting um, retirees from, from the service uh, sector. Uh, amputees and, and spe you know, those kinds of things. Special needs ch uh, people out on the water. And I support those groups 110%. Mystery Tackle Box doesn't seem to do that, at least from anything that I've, I've found. So I'd be more willing to shoot a company that might not give me as high a quality name brand at the same price than Mystery Tackle Box, which I do get, if I know that they're charitable tour towards something that I find to be advantageous to getting more people into the passion of the sport and the pastime and the relaxation of getting out on the water and fishing. I'm not a fanboy of Mystery Tackle Box. It just happens to be the one that I, 
I buy because Lucky Tackle Box has lost any monochrome of respect. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, what the heck is that? The, the, the five pound bulk bag BS from Fishing Care Package. I will never support that company. I don't care if a new CEO bought, I don't care if, if Mystery Tackle Box bought it out and tried to change their name to that, I would drop, I still wouldn't buy from that, from that, that title, ever. Because I've seen and had too much frustration from just rampant abuses of, of customers and failed customer service. Lucky Tackle Box is in the same, same aspect. There's many people who have tried to cancel their Lucky Tackle Box subscriptions and they're not getting customer service. If you're one of the Lucky Tackle Box people, I hope that if you're trying to cancel, you're not keep getting charged, overcharged, overcharged, and keep getting boxes that you don't want, didn't order, and they're refusing just to outright cancel it timely. I, I, I really hope that you, you don't have that issue, but I know a few people that have had that. Where they've gotten three months of boxes they didn't want and had to actually fight with their credit card companies to get reimbursement because they never freaking ordered it. They canceled their stuff months earlier. That said, June. He got something that Monster Bass, specifically in their promos leading up to their opening, said they would never do. No no-name brands. All name brand established corporations, they, they touted on the fact that these other corporations were throwing in these Chinese knockoffs and these uh, secondary created uh, baits that they put under their own title. And what did Monster Bass do? They put in their packages for this month, for, at least from this gentleman, a Monster Bass crankbait. Monster Bass brand. Nobody knows Monster Bass. It doesn't exist. It's a no-name bait company. Because it doesn't, it doesn't exist. They're putting their own baits. They're promoting, they're self-promoting. It is filler to a box that you pay for. You're paying $35 to get specifically what is said to be all name brands. They're throwing in their own stuff. Now you want to throw that in the box for free and add another bait so that you live up to your, your eight, nine, whatever your eight baits, I believe they say. That's fine. Okay, but you can't credit that as part of your package, and you shouldn't be putting it into the package value. You're taking away space from a name brand that I might want to get. But you're putting in your monster bass bait, promoting people to then go into a shop and buy your product. 100% profit. That's not value. That's not honest. Because you said, at least in the promos leading up to the release of this, that it was all name brands, established corporations. If you want to do this and you want to be a name brand, put out your monster bait company, build your, build your, your, your category of, of baits, put them in stores, put them in tackle warehouse, or, well, tackle shops, I should say, not tackle warehouse, because, again, that's pretty much a box company. But put in uh, Dick's, uh, uh, you know, Cabela's Academy. Throw them out there for a year. Get them established in the market. Prove that you can compete. You can certainly beat, you know, the H2... I mean, you're going to have to take a dealing with H2O Express from Academy being the in-store brand. Or uh, put them in Walmarts. I'm sure your quality is, that, is much better than uh, what is it? whatever trail it is. That's the Walmart brand. You could beat them in that market. Establish yourself for a year or two. Then throw them in your boxes two years down the road as part of your package deals. No problem. No heartache. No upset for me. But when you, on the very second box you put out, you're throwing your brand baits in there, filling your box with no-name crap, it's the same exact thing as Mystery Tackle Box throwing their Carl's crap in. It's the same... Okay, I won't say they're Chinese knockoff if I can take this man by his words because he did put out that the baits designed for Monster Bass are produced through Rapala. Rapala, whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce them. And Rapala is an established corporation. But if you wanted to do that, and you want to be 100% honest with me as marketing, I would have said, okay, fine. They come in Rapala packaging. Ask Rapala to package them up and throw your Monster Bass Bass exclusive design on the Rapala packaging, throw them in the box. At least you're giving the 
consumer the understanding that it is a Rapala bait. It just happens to be designed specifically only and exclusively for Monster Bass subscription purchasers. But you didn't. You went out and you box it under a Monster Bass package. Now I can't, I can only go by your word that it's Rapala Corp that are building these. I don't know. You could have some Chinese R-A-P-P-A-L-A -A company making this. I know there's some Gucci bags in New York City I can buy a lot cheaper than my Gucci ones. Just saying. I have to go by word, and I have to go by the overall constraint of what I see. And in the mass of data points, first month, I wasn't impressed when every single box was, was the same, not regionally specific. Second month, you shoot yourself in the foot not living up to your mission statement by supplying, again, pretty much corporation-specific, contract-specific baits, not regionally diverse, and your own name brand product in there. When going into this specifically, we weren't going to see Carl's Tackle Company crap. Or whatever LTB throws in for their brand. I forget what their sub knockoff co corporation is. Or with, you know, in the case of Academy, has the, uh, the, uh, the H2O Express is the Academy brand. Or the whatever, Gander Mountain. I'm not going to say Gander Mountain because that's incorrect. I apologize. But whatever the, the, the regional thing is for Walmart or what have you. You're, you lied outright. This is strike one, strike two. Third strike is, I hope that the corporation f just either fixes their shit, pulls their head out of their ass, and lives by their word, or I hope they fail. Because I know there are other corporations out there that can pick this ball up and run to the end zone with it and do it properly and honestly. Where there is regional specific baits, it's not everybody gets... A friggin, uh, you know, smart bait. The only difference is one's a, cro a crawl profile and one's a worm. You can get young worms here, smart baits there. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. Now, I apologize. I know this rent went a little long, but I have a passion. My passion, the whole reason I did this, is I want people to be protected from blowing hard-earned cash that they could better be suited to spend taking their children out, gaining more advanced knowledge or better stuff, not get caught up in the marketing gimmicks. Um, that This has been entirely my personal opinion. It's not a slight on Monster Bass, Lucky Tackle Box, Mystery Tackle Box, Bait Crate, or any of the other corporations out there. It is a slam at, uh, at uh, Fishing Care Package. Screw them. I got no love for them. I don't care. I don't care if the mass majority of people were completely on the other side of it. From personal friends and personal experience, that corporation will never get any respect from me. Um, I'm hoping Monster Bass doesn't fall into that category of losing the respect that I have. Because, again, this is something that I spent an hour and a half talking with a representative to try to push with that corporation, which I knew was already established and big and had a warehouse full of equipment and properties that they could push this kind of an idea and make it successful. They don't want to push the logistics of that, so screw them, I don't care. I want this to succeed. I want this to beat Mystery Tackle Box. I want it to be the gold standard in, in tackle subscription boxes. I do. I just don't see it happening. I want them to get off on the right foot. They're tripping a little bit. Maybe, hopefully, they'll take constructive criticism Go forward, do it right, get more influence from these quote-unquote pros. I'm not a big fan of, of uh, you know, my personal region, the Northeast, um, Smallmouth Crush. I followed him, I know, I just, it is what it is. Uh, Travis is, is, a, is an experienced guy. Um, and he's got many, many checks under his belt. He's got many losses under his belt, but we all do. We get skunked one day and come back and catch the world's, you know, our, our largest personal best 
uh, you know, it just happens. That's life. You're not in 100% control. But you go out and you keep building experience and enjoying it. That said, um, I apologize if this was a rant and you, you don't like it. Tell me you didn't like it. I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll abstain from doing these. But I got feedback from multiple sources and a couple of um, you know comments and other videos that said, yeah, go out and, and say what you what you feel. I spent the time. I let the first one go. I wanted to see what came in this month's box to see if it completely changed. If a person, if my friend in California got a completely different thing than a person in Florida, I would have not made this video. Uh, but when the same things happen again, and seeing both getting Monster Bass brand products, I I felt all right, that's that's two strikes. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, or excuse me, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I don't let myself be fooled a third time. Um, I hope this was just, if not informative, uh, it gives you a sense to go out and research, be consumer aware. You are responsible for what you spend your money on. Uh, I don't want anybody getting ripped off. I want you to understand, do the research. Don't get the first, me personally, watch other people get the first year of a car. Because if there's problems with it, you don't have to suffer them. Um, if, if it works out and you see that it's a great buy, then go down to your dealership and pick one up. Uh, same thing happens with everything, and, and these subscription boxes are the same way. Now, in July, I'm getting a box that is not a bait box. It's an equipment box. It's a, it's a very high-priced thing. If Monster Bass is to become the gold standard, this company should be the platinum standard. Uh, especially for the price you pay. Um, but uh, again, they're not going to give baits. They're just giving equipment. So hopefully that'll work out. It's, it's a one-time, probably just a one-time gift for myself. If I really do like it, I might keep the subscription going. Uh, but for the price point, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm holding on reservations on whether or not that's going to be a good uh, investment. That said... I know this was long and I apologize. There won't ever be a video this long again. Uh, I hope this has been enjoyable. I hope this gives you an understanding. I hope you go out and research and follow up. I don't bullshit. I keep it real. I keep it true. And I want to make sure that if I have any information that I can, uh, can provide uh, to save you money or to help you go to this corporation because they're actually giving out excellent baits, if you are okay with that, go out and subscribe. I hope, I hope they succeed. If it shows you pause, Take your time, let them establish themselves, and then jump on it. It could save you, uh, you know, several several hundred dollars in six months or so until they've got themselves locked down, and then they start providing the service that they promote to be supplying. Um, foul mouth fishing, uh, tight lines, good luck, and uh, God bless.